Hey, my name is Karina Bostum, and I'm an associate professor in rehabilitation medicine at Karolinska Institutet. I have had the pleasure to be the convener for a task force that has developed EULA recommendations for non-pharmacological management for people with SLE and systemic sclerosis. I'm very happy and proud to announce that the recommendations have been developed and also published in Annals of the Rheumatic Diseases. I'm Yanis Parodis. I'm a consultant rheumatologist at the Karolinska University Hospital and an associate professor of rheumatology at the Karolinska Institute. I have been the research fellow in this important EULA task force for the development of overarching principles and recommendations for the non-pharmacological management of people with systemic lupus erythematosus and systemic sclerosis. My name is Laurent Arnaud and I'm a rheumatologist working in Strasbourg in France. Living with systemic lupus or systemic sclerosis can be challenging, but there's more to managing these conditions than just medications. We are very excited to introduce our recent EULA recommendations for the non-pharmacological management of these diseases. We know that non-pharmacological management plays a crucial role in the comprehensive care of patients with systemic lupus and systemic sclerosis. These recommendations very much aim to provide healthcare professionals and uh, patients with evidence-based strategies to improve overall well-being and quality of life in SLE and systemic sclerosis. We defined non-pharmacological management as all approaches that are not classed as pharmacological. Examples of these are patient education, physical exercise, lifestyle or behavior interventions, dietary interventions, psychosocial interventions, protection, smoking cessation, and so many other interventions. Although these play an important role in ensuring comprehensive care, they are underused in clinical practice, mainly due to lack of guidance. So this project aimed to develop evidence-based recommendations for the non-pharmacological management of SLE and systemic sclerosis. We followed the EULA standard operating procedures for developing recommendations, which started by forming the task force led by the convener and the EULA approved methodologist. For this project, we also had a deputy methodologist. Then there's research fellow and the task force members, which comprised rheumatologists, health professionals in rheumatology and patient representatives. All these came from 11 countries. Then the task force held the first meeting, which was to develop research questions. These are consensus meetings. The research fellow then used those questions to undertake a systematic review guided by the methodologist. In the subsequent meetings, which were online, the research fellow reported the research evidence corresponding to each research question. Then the task force used this evidence to develop the recommendations. The task force developed four overarching principles. The first one was that uh, non-pharmacological management of SLA and systemic sclerosis should be tailored to the patient's needs, expectations, and preferences, and it should be based on a shared decision-making. The second one was that non-pharmacological management of SLA and systemic sclerosis may comprise one or more interventions. The third one was that non-pharmacological management may be provided alone or as an adjunct to pharmaceutical treatment. And the fourth one was that non-pharmacological management should not substitute for pharmaceutical treatment when the latter is required. The task force also developed five recommendations in common for a systemic lupus erythematosus and systemic sclerosis. The first one was that non-pharmacological management should be directed towards improving health-related quality of life. The second one is that people with SLE and systemic sclerosis should be offered patient education and self-management support. The third recommendation is that uh, smoking habits should be assessed and cessation strategies should be implemented. Fourth one was that avoidance of cold exposure should be considered for the prevention of Raynaud's phenomenon and in systemic sclerosis, this is of particular importance for the mitigation of severe Raynaud's phenomenon. And the fifth recommendation in common for SLE and systemic sclerosis was that exercise should be considered for people with these diseases. We next developed disease-specific recommendations, one set for systemic lupus erythematosus and one set for systemic sclerosis. For systemic lupus erythematosus, we developed four recommendations. The first one was that in people with SLE, patient education and self-management support should be considered for improving physical exercise outcomes and health quality of life and could be considered for enhancing self-efficacy. The second one, was that photoprotection should be advised for the prevention of flares. The third one was that psychosocial interventions should be considered for improving health-related quality of life 
anxiety, and depressive symptoms. And the fourth one was that aerobic exercise should be considered for increasing aerobic capacity and for reducing fatigue and depressive symptoms. And the recommendation for systemic sclerosis were that the patient education and self-management support should be considered for improving health function, mouth-related outcomes, health-related quality of life, and the ability to perform daily activities. The second recommendation was that orofacial, hand resistance, and different kind of aerobic exercises should be considered for improving microstomia, hand function, and physical capacity. And the third recommendation for systemic sclerosis was that in puffy hand, manual lymph drainers could be considered for improving hand function. The task force voted to agree on each statement using a numeric rating scale from zero, complete disagreement, and 10, meaning complete agreement. The average agreement across recommendations was high, ranging from 8.4 to 9.4 out of 10. Now that the recommendations are developed, we, we are working on a plan to implement the recommendations across different European countries. Please read our full paper in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases. And if you're a clinician, please reflect on how these recommendations could be implemented in your clinical practice. I would also like to mention that the systematic literature review informing the recommendations of the non-pharmacological management of SLE and systemic sclerosis also has been accepted for publication in RMD Open. I encourage you to read this piece of work as well. And I would like to send my special thanks to the many people who contributed to the completion of this work. And we would like to thank you, Ula, for funding this work. Thank you.